So a few days ago in my Google Now feed, I got an alert for a Pink Pink article on the FSA Powerbox. And the FSA Powerbox is nothing new. However, related to the mountain biking world, I guess it is something new or a bit of a relaunch or a product expansion. So they're marketing this new carbon arms with a standard FSA power meter, um, which is a power to max power meter. But they're really promoting saying that you're getting it for a lower price because they've taken out features that you can software upgrade. So with this, the unfortunate thing is two of those metrics, and thus two of those upgrades, are completely bogus. One of them is just not filling in data they already have. And the other one is something that they've already implemented, but just kind of intentionally crippled. So let's talk about that first one. And that one is Bluetooth. So how do you think you're upgrading this crank? I'm, and I'm, I'm dead serious. It is done by having a GAT service with GAT attributes and getting a key and putting it in and transmitting it all over the standard Bluetooth protocol. And then it enables it. But Bluetooth is already there. Bluetooth is functional. They just don't have the GAT service and the tributes for the power meter. What I mean about the tributes, essentially that defines all the, the robust data gathering and transmission method and fault tolerance methods. And realistically to set up the service, I mean, they're using the NRF51. There's a lot of reference code. It's about 10 lines of additional code to set up that additional service. It's 40 lines of code to set up those attributes. And it's about 10 lines of code to update them on every rotation, which is what they're doing on the AMP Plus profile. So it's a bit expensive at $50, but it's probably your cheapest way if you're using things like Zwift to get your power meter data into it on BLE. Because a lot of things that are using computers as a platform, some of them have AMP Plus, but the more easy, the cell phone based ones, the Apple TV based ones, those are going to be limited to Bluetooth. So it should be a standard feature because it's already 99% there. They've intentionally crippled it. But you know, 50 more dollars in their pocket, well, that's fine. However, on to balance. You see, I've talked about balance on spiders before and how it is teetotally, 100%, absolutely, infallibly impossible to calculate balance on a spider. Now, can you calculate something else? I mean, it's the internet. You can make up any math you want and you can certainly sell whatever you want. And that's what they've done here. Um, Quark does it too, but it's included as a standard feature, so I'm not giving them grief over it. But what it is, is it's comparing your half of your stroke, your, your downstroke, if you will, with your next downstroke. But when you're making this downstroke, this leg is pushing down as it goes up in some people's cases, in most people's cases. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at an example here. And this is a bit crude, but it will highlight the point. So the left leg is a bit lazy on the upstroke. It loses about 10 watts of power. On the downstroke, it's putting in 100. So we have a total of 90 watts of power. The right side, we start here and we push, and it's about 90 watts of power, but then my, the leg doesn't do anything. It's not pushing down. It's just kind of, we're pulling it up, but it's not applying any torque. Well, that's 90 watts, that's 90 watts, so that's a 50-50 balance. But by comparing the strokes, this overlays to this. And what do you get? Well, the not right is 80 because it's 90 minus 10, and 100 plus zero is 100. Wait, what? So we have a 56-44 balance. No, it's 50-50. Well, that's just wrong, and this is legitimately able to happen. People don't pedal perfectly exactly the same left and right at whatever power for, for myself as an example, my leg balance, my peak torques are in sync 
all the way up, but my leg balance looks left heavy, but it's not. My right leg is lazier on the upstroke. So this tells us nothing. It fills in a data field. Eh, don't buy it. An extension on this is smoothness. This is when we take our stroke all the way around and it compares the peak, which usually happens somewhere out here, to the average. And that's kind of a useful metric. The best use of these metrics I've actually seen are the guys at Training Peaks have used them to actually disassemble power through a true left-right balance, then use the torque effectiveness and pell smoothness metrics to figure out where these peaks are and how much energy is being lost. Um, so they can kind of figure out a bunch of extra stuff from that. And that's really useful. But here, what we've got is we're measuring the peak, any peak, either peak, uh, whichever one it happens to be at the time versus the average. So if you are starting to increase power and your left legs, you know, kind of is weaker at higher powers, your right is peaking higher, but at lower powers, it's vice versa. You'll eventually have this jump in this. So this metric, we can't disassemble the power data. We can't because the left right is mucked up. It doesn't know if it's left or right because it's mucked up. So it's generally useless, but also it's four lines of code. And these are the lines of code like legitimately, these are the lines of code. Yes, they're maybe missing a bracket or two, but if the current torque at that instant is greater than the max torque, update your max torque. So this is just kind of a placeholder. And then when you get a rotation, um, this is when you update your ant plus pages or your attributes. You just calculate your pedal smoothness is equal to your torque max over your torque average. And your torque average is needed to calculate power. So you, you calculate that, you update your ant page, and you reset T max. Four lines of code. $50. It's all wrong. So on to the torque. Okay, final metric. So what, what have we got? Buy Bluetooth, don't buy, don't buy. Torque. Uh, it's quick, don't buy. Um, but the why you're not going to buy it is Ant Plus is broken up into four types of pages for power meter data. The basic, the crank, the wheel, and crank frequency. We're going to not talk about crank frequency because that was just to make SRM happy and has just been a headache ever since for really no good reason. So everyone is mandatory, including the SRM one, to include the basic power page. And what that ensures is that there is backwards compatibility. There's a fallback. So if you can't decode that page in your head unit, decode the basic power page, that's fine. So in order to get power, we have to calculate the torque. So we have to get that average torque for that whole rotation. We have to figure out how long it took to rotate via measuring things like zero cross on an accelerometer. And when we have that time and that torque, we can calculate power and we fill in that basic power page. And that's what you're getting when you buy this as a basic feature set. What they're advertising is torque or crank torque pages. And crank torque pages have a higher accuracy because they separate out the torque part from the timing part. So you get more accurate timing, you get more accurate torque. Well, tell you what, I got basic power and I've got my cadence. And since power is torque in Newton meters times cadence and radians per second, with a little bit of conversion, I can get those values. Not as accurate, but it's a hop, skip and a jump to writing a connect IQ app to decode basic power pages into those values. So they're already calculating them. They're just choosing not to fill in those pages and not to use those pages. And they're not useful. Um, they're really not something that is that useful. It may be to a mountain biker, potentially, but there's no real training theory based around torque. It's just another nice metric to have on your head unit. And realistically, any old 
dev with, you know, any old Arduino level dev can go out and write a connect IQ app that disassembles that in about four lines of code. So $50. So essentially don't buy any of this, save your money, make sure you get Bluetooth, especially now that's 2019. Um, really they should be getting some feedback of that should be a standard feature. Yeah, you can have these upgrades, but they're all useless anyway, so don't buy them. Um, with that, I'm going back to working on my fan controller, which is getting pretty nice. So um, thanks for watching and uh, look forward to updating you soon.